Modern compilers like the c compiler are quite powerful. Utilizing its features right increases our productivity and can even avoid bugs while reducing testing efforts at the same time. In this video we will explore various compiler features, which are quite useful when designing data structures and we will discuss when to use which feature with a focus on clean code. This is the most simplest way to define a data structure. We use the long existing c compiler feature auto implemented properties and define their set as public to save the effort of manually implementing a constructor. Instead, we use the object initializer syntax to create an instance of this data structure. Looking at the c code, there are no surprises at all. So this code is very simple and can be easily understood by every developer. Inspecting the compiler generated code also doesn't reveal any magic. The compiler just generates so-called backing fields for the properties and implements the properties for us. The drawback of this simplicity, the data structure is mutable, which means the state of such an object can be changed after creation anywhere in the code. So the code using such a data structure cannot trust that the object is valid, even if the creator of the object had correctly initialized it. For this reason, I only use this approach outside of the business logic. In the context of the clean architecture, it means I do not use it to define entities and also not to define data structures used in the use cases layer. In these layers, it is very important that objects are never invalid, so this simple design is not appropriate from my perspective. I would recommend to use this simplistic design only for data transfer objects, which are intended to be passed to components and services outside of the application logic. For example, I use it to define view model types, which are then passed to the web framework to be converted to JSON and sent to the frontend. View model types I also use in my tests as shown in this video. And also here, such a simple design would be okay as tests anyhow do not trust that objects are valid but verify the correctness on their own as this is their whole purpose. We can slightly improve this simplistic design by using the init keyword, which means once initialized such properties cannot be changed again. We can still use the object initializer syntax to create an instance of such a class and if all properties are using the init keyword, we get an object which is immutable after creation. And this means, assuming that only valid objects of such a class are created, when using such objects across the code base, we can trust that these did not get invalidated accidentally. The C-sharp code is still very simple as the meaning of the init keyword can be learned quickly. Looking at the generated code, we can only identify one difference. The backing fields are read-only and so cannot be reassigned. But this also means that the init keyword does not guarantee that a property gets initialized at all. For example, if we introduce a new property, the compiler will not detect if we have somewhere in the codebase forgotten to initialize it. Therefore, data structures designed like this still do not qualify to be used in the application logic unless the codebase is pretty small and completely fits in your brain so that you can easily verify whether an object is valid or not by just reviewing the code. I do use the init keyword for my view model types and other data transfer objects by default as it does not add any cost and removes a bit of risk of accidentally altering a property. The usage of the init keyword also results in slightly simpler code as each property value is computed and assigned only once. c 11 and .NET 7 try to address this problem of unassigned properties by introducing the compiler keyword required, which causes the compiler to complain if properties marked with this keyword are not initialized. This feature definitely improves the code as expectations are expressed more clearly. It also reduces bugs as newly added but not yet initialized properties are now detected by the compiler. As all my .NET projects are still based on .NET 6, I have not yet used this new feature, but I will definitely start using it in the scenarios described earlier. But when it comes to the domain model and other application logic objects, I'm still not happy using such data structures as the required keyword still allows initialization with invalid values like null, which becomes understandable if we check the compiler generated code. The required keyword effectively does not produce different code. We still see regular properties with the read-only backing fields. Only some attributes have been added which are used by the compiler to verify that these properties are initialized at all. Even though the discussed compiler features improve productivity, and already help quite a bit to get expressive code and to even reduce bugs. I would not design domain model entities and application logic objects this way for the reasons already explained. 
Instead, I still mostly handcraft such classes using a custom constructor for validation and treat only properties wherever applicable. Obviously, this causes more effort, but from my perspective, the benefit of ensuring, by design of the class itself, that no invalid object can ever exist clearly outbalances the initial cost of implementation. But what about records? The primary aspect of records is to add value type semantics to reference types. The easiest way to understand what records are and for what these are useful is to look at the code generated by the compiler. We see regular properties and an overridden to string method which pretty prints the object including all members. But the main difference between a record and a class is that equality and so identity is defined by the values of all properties. Even the equals and not equals operators are already defined for a record. This makes records a great tool for designing so-called value objects, which are exactly defined by such properties. We can create records by manually defining properties like in this example. And we can use the init keyword and the required keyword here as well. But we can achieve the same with even less effort by using so-called positional parameters. I don't use records for view model types and other data transfer objects, as value object semantics are not needed in such cases. But I do use records in the domain model and the application logic to define value objects. Even though records defined in this very convenient and concise way are immutable objects, one problem remains. How can we ensure that only valid instances are created? In the application logic and domain layer, I definitely do not want to rely on the creator of such objects only that no invalid instances are created. We want validation built into such objects. The obvious solution is to create a custom constructor and define read-only properties explicitly, which requires manual effort, but creates very simple and easy to understand code. And most importantly, the object itself defines what a valid instance is. With this approach, we still get all the compiler-generated code for pretty printing such objects and for equality comparison. Alternatively, we can use a little trick I have found during my research. We can use a validator class to validate the properties while initializing a private field. The value returned by the validator is not relevant. The trick is that during initialization of the record, the field also gets initialized and so the validation code gets executed, which throws an exception in case invalid parameters got passed to the constructor of the record. Effort-wise, this little trick looks very convenient, but from clean code perspective, the intention of this code is probably not obvious to every developer. What is your opinion? Do you use record types in your code base? And would you recommend this trick to ensure that only valid instances of your records are created? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next video.